are back with comedian Dave Boyle and I'm quitting alcohol. I'm fucking banged up, cunts. I'm fucking banged up. Saturday morning jits. Fucking. I think I need to take a couple of days off. I got fucking kneed in the head three times today. My fucking elbows, both elbows are fucked. My forearms are fucked. The tendon that's connecting my fucking bicep to the fucking bone feels like it's about to pop off. I can't close my hands, either of them, because all my fingers are fucking like sprained from fucking gripping the gi and cunts ripping out of it. I've got fucking rash burn on my feet. One of my ankles is like sprained and all my toes are fucked. I'm feeling my fucking age right now, but fucking that's not going to keep me off the mats. I'll be there Tuesday. Don't you worry about that. But fucking, it's a lot. (laughs) It's a lot. I went to a show last night. Me and my wife got the fucking night off the kids. So we went out and saw my good friend, comedian Sam Kisajukian's show. 300 paintings in lockdown. So he's a comedian, but what happened was, I'll just give you the quick story. During lockdown, he had a full-blown manic fucking five-month episode and found out that he's bipolar. He started painting and it turns out the cunt's fucking autistic at painting and his paintings are fucking amazing. When I met him, he literally had started painting a year before. I went and saw some of his paintings like last year. And I just wanted to buy them. I don't know anything about painting, but I was like, that's fucking good. Whatever that is, it's good. So the cunt's like a full-blown fucking artist with bipolar and a comedian as well. So what he's done is he's put this show together where it's like an art exhibition and stand-up. It's a show and it's also running through his mental illness and the manic episode and all that sort of stuff. It's a very fucking unique show. And we went to it last night. I saw it fucking a couple of times last year, but he's fucking polished it all up. It's a good fucking show. And the art is really fucking good. So if you see that around, it's probably going to be at the Fringe next year. Edinburgh Fringe, I mean. He'll take it around fucking everywhere. I don't know. It's a good show. It's fucking unique. And he's a good fucking dude too. He's refusing to sell his paintings as well. (laughs) He's fucking dead broke. He lives in a fucking factory and he still refuses to sell his painting. Cunts have been offering him quite a lot of money for his paintings as well and he just doesn't want to sell them, which I think is adding to the value of the paintings. This cunt won't sell us any of his paintings. Normally, fucking artists are, like, desperate to sell you anything. Just please take my fucking abstract fucking painting of a girl with tits and flowers. $50, $40, $30, whatever. I'll pay for the postage and handling. Sounds like I don't want to sell it. The crowd coming to his show as well is, like, old white people. Art lovers, I would call them. Money people. They've got money. I was looking around, there was a few turtlenecks, there was a lot of old cunts with their legs crossed and their fucking elbows on their knees, leaning forward with their hands in their fucking head. That's the biggest art enthusiast pose, it's so gay. But big difference between his crowd and my crowd, that's for sure. So afterwards, me and my wife just went out for fucking dinner, had a nice little fucking dinner date, Sam popped in and then fucking... That's it. I'm sitting here right now in my fucking podcast chair, just covered in a blanket. That's how sore I am all over. (laughs) It's fucking 35 outside. It's so hot, but I feel so fragile. I've just wrapped myself in a fucking blanket and I'm just like half shaking. Some of these fucking big dudes. And I mean, I'm not like fucking small either. I'm at 82 kilos now. I've actually lost two kilos of fat, I think. But there's guys like way bigger than me, like taller and an extra 20 kilos and fucking 10 years younger, way more than 10 years, actually, like 15 years younger. And fuck, it just takes a lot to fucking deal with them. 
a lot of fucking energy. So we do five rounds and maybe I can fucking wrestle two of these fucking big, strong fucking young bucks in the five wrestles. The other ones, oh, I mean, fucking, I'm not dodging anyone either, but if there's a fucking skinny ass fucking white belt standing there a fucking lone <laughs> after I wrestle fucking one of these big boys, I'm not fucking looking for a blue belt or a fucking purple belt. I'm fucking nodding over to the fucking 64 kilo cunt on his first day. Come over here. I'm going to fucking sit on you for five minutes and rest. Practice my submissions. I know I go on about it all the time, but I'll tell you a real nice thing about jujitsu is the improvement you see and the way the improvement comes on. You fucking work. You fucking turn up. You do the work. You fucking drill the techniques. You wrestle and the rest of it takes care of itself. As long as you keep doing those things, you'll improve. And it's, it's not exactly linear, like the improvement and your progression, but you can see it. You can see it all the time. Whereas in stand-up, it's fucking, it's all over the place. Like day by day, week by week, it's fucking all over the shop. It's heading in that direction, like improved direction all the time in increments, but there's a lot of regression. There's a lot of fucking staying shit for a while, even though you're doing all the fucking right things and then you'll bump up a bit and then you'll get overconfident and back down. And then it's just, it's chaos. It's just absolute chaos. So it's just beautiful to have something in your life that you're working at and there's consistency in the improvement. Well, so far, anyway, it really balances out the chaos of fucking stand-up. But I tell you what, fucking, I'm feeling the aches and pains. I am. Anyway, that'll fucking do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around, and I'll see you the fuck later.